I'm Mark Halley, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Continuing with the fish on the fringe theme from last week's episode, today I'm going to talk to you about three fish that are deep into the fish on the fringe territory. Now all these fish are crowd pleasers among people who don't keep saltwater tanks. They're going to look at your tank and they're going to say, that one's my favorite. And when a reefer sees these fish in your tank, they're going to say, you put that in your reef? The answer is yes, and here's my experience with all three of these fish. First up are two fish that are guaranteed to turn heads. They are the blue throat triggerfish and the crosshatch triggerfish. Contrary to popular belief, these triggers are quite reef safe. Eating coral isn't their thing. It's widely believed that their upturned mouths make them avoid corals. Triggers with mouths that face forward like clown triggers are more likely to munch on or rearrange your coral. Blue throat triggers, also known as blue jaw triggers, are accepted as the most reef safe of triggerfish. The males are prettier than the females, sorry ladies, as the males have the signature blue lower jaw. The male also has fins lined in yellow. Blue throats do great in pairs and are quite hardy. I enjoyed the pair I had in my 235 gallon tank, and speaking of tank size, blue throats do well in smaller tanks, 125 gallons and up. They're active swimmers, so a tank that's at least 48 inches across the front is better for them. The second head turner is also a trigger fish, the crosshatch trigger. A bucket list for many, these triggers have a golden body, blue streaks on their face, and yellow and red lined fins. Native to Hawaii means a shorter supply chain and well-managed fishery, which results in better specimens. Crosshatches get quite big. It's not uncommon to see them come in at eight inches plus. Even though I prefer smaller specimens, any crosshatch trigger will be very active in your tank. It should only be placed in tanks 300 gallons or more. Ideally, that 300 plus gallon tank would be eight feet across the front. Lots of tunnels and caves in your aquascaping gives the fish places to explore and to hide and therefore feel comfortable. Both the blue throat triggers and the crosshatch triggers have been model citizens. The blue throats that I put in my previous tanks never touched any invertebrates and they never touched any corals. Now my crosshatch trigger who's in my 450 gallon tank, he's never touched any corals, he's never touched any invertebrates. He will harass new arrivals that are smaller than him, but after 24 hours he leaves the new fish alone. Placing either one of these fish in your reef is definitely going to turn heads. The next head turner fish on the fringe, the Australian Harlequin Tusk. Now I said Australian Harlequin Tusk for a couple of reasons. First, the Aussie Harlequin Tusk are much more colorful than their Indonesian counterparts. Second, Australia fishery regulations require hand catching fish, which means stronger specimens and better fish. Third, the Australian supply chain is short, so the fish doesn't get moved from collector to aggregator to exporter, etc. The collector likely does all these jobs, which helps make for better specimens. A harlequin tusk very likely won't touch your coral, but certain invertebrates like starfish and shrimp will quickly be eaten. Snails and crabs might be on the menu, especially if your tusk gets hungry. Pro tip, while my tusk has never touched or even chased any fish in my tank, they have a reputation for eating small fish. Choosing tusk specimens under five inches may help you avoid that problem. Harlequin tusk are solitary fish. Only keep one in your tank and they need a lot of room to swim around. No less than a 300 gallon tank that is six feet across the front is preferred. Despite their love of swimming room, don't be surprised if they are quite shy when you first put them in your tank. G'day Mark, it's Laura from Cairns Marine, just checking in. We're so excited to know how much you love your harlequin tusk fish from Australia. Like all wrasses, harlequin tusk fish can be a little bit cryptic and shy when you first put them into your aquarium. But as you found in no time, these little guys, once they get comfortable and settled in, have tons and tons of personality. My Australian Harlequin Tusk was very cryptic when I first got him, and it didn't help that he was bullied by an Atlantic blue tang. The tang that was half the tusk size kept the tusk pinned in a cave for two days. Only after removing the tang in a late night fishing expedition did the tusk venture out and explore my tank. Same thing happens when I go to feed. I put food in the tank and that tusk hides out. The first time I feed he doesn't come out at all. He has to make sure of his surroundings before he's going to come out and eat. When I put in another round of food, then he comes out and eats. So he looks mean, but he's actually a big wuss. If you have a smaller tank and a smaller budget, the blue throat triggerfish are for you. 
dream fist chasers with big tanks, the crosshatch trigger needs to be on your list. And for those of you okay not having starfish or shrimp in your tank, the Australian Harlequin test will turn heads and delight anyone looking at your tank. The blue throat trigger, the crosshatch trigger, and the Harlequin tusk are all fish on the fringe. They're likely not going to touch your coral, but they may go after your invertebrates. Now the blue throat trigger is the safest bet of those three. They're arguably the most reef safe trigger that you can put into your tank. And keep in mind, you're dealing with an animal. Different animals have different tastes. And what's worked for me may not work for you, but these are fish on the fringe. You're risking more, which gives you more potential for reward. I promise you put one of these fish in your tank, it's gonna turn heads, and you're gonna get a heck of a lot of enjoyment out of it. I'm Mark Kelly, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.